in church. Y'all okay? Y'all ain't going to get mad at me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to say it again. Fight, doggone it. You know, last Sunday we talked about uh, uh, clinging to the problem. We talked about standing. And we talked about how, you know, if there's a requirement. It, it is required. If I'm going to experience the promises of God, everything doesn't just, you know, I pray and then everything happens in the next 15 minutes. Um, once I pray, once I stand on the word, my next thing is to prepare to stand. Sometimes you don't have to stand. Sometimes it comes to pass. But sometimes, most of the time, a lot of time, it doesn't happen right after you pray. And so we, 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 we talked a lot about that. And I hope that um, those of you that were here, I hope you picked up on that. Because um, if you can't stand, you can't, you can't possess. And if you don't know, you know... We may go back over some of that. I, I have the same scriptures. But he talks about the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6 is to stand. It's, it's, it's required and designed for us to put it on so we can stand. And then the Amplified says to successfully stand. Now, I saw Pastor Dollar teaching, using some of the same scripture the other day, and he was preaching on some of it. So I said, he must be hearing from the Lord. Because I know I am. <laughs> But anyway, I'm just playing. But but so so standing is is not it's not a passive thing, and it's not easy. And what happens is a lot of times we try to stand in our own strength. That's where he gets us. That's where he gets us. And and, and I don't want to go back all the way over that because I want to talk about fighting tonight. Y'all ready to fight? Okay, let me see y'all. Uh, we got some violent people in here tonight, huh? Okay, now, so Paul talked a lot about fighting, and he talked a lot about warfare. And these are some words he gave to his son Timothy. And here's Paul getting ready to leave the earth. And so he's teaching Timothy, his son, not only how to fight, but how to fight and win. I want you to listen to me really good, please. Man. So let's look at uh, verse 12. And it says, in fact, let's read it out together. Ready? Read. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay. So fight. What kind of fight? Good. Fight the good fight. So there's a fight. And what, what, what is the good fight? That's one you win. I remember I, to, I, I didn't lose too many. But uh, the ones I did lose, I didn't tell anybody about them because they wasn't good. But if I won, I was like, hey, man, did you hear about uh Anyway, go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. I don't want y'all to think bad about me. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. And here's Paul again with his fighting self. He said, I have what? I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept. The faith. Uh, let me read. I have a uh, new living translation. I like it. It says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have remained faithful. The uh, message Bible says, this is the only race worth running. I run hard right to the finish. And I believe all of the way. Now, I will rehearse a couple things I said. I said that, uh, Sunday that the nature of of Christianity is warfare. True, authentic Christianity is a fight. We were born in a war. <laughs> uh, people that tell me they don't fight, believers, I, 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 I have a hard time believing it. I'll just say it like that. Now Paul taught us that um, <laughs> Well, he, I wrote this down. Most of us want our Christian life to be comfortable. You know, we, we want everybody to like us. Everybody to agree with us. We don't want any pressure. We want everybody, you know, uh, uh, Paul, Jesus even said, you're going to have haters. People are going to hate you. If they hate me, hated me, they're going to hate you. Some of them are going to hate you. They were fine until you got saved. Some of them are going to hate you just because you got saved now. Because he said, some of them are going to hate you for my sake. Didn't he say it? But how come 
a lot of times people want, they want, they don't want any friction, they don't want any disagreement, they want everybody to agree with them, they want everybody to understand their position, they want everybody to see things their way. That ain't happening. And so he lets us know here that you're going to have some times where um, it's, it's, it's just not going to work out the way you want to. So the nature of Christianity is warfare. You stepped into a battle. You stepped into a war zone. That is why, if I don't know this, that's why a lot of people, you know, I call getting, get, get picked off. They, 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 they run, remember Paul said, I run the race. I fought a good fight. I run the race. He, it, it was a process, and it was a long. It was a race. It was a long journey. There gonna be times when it seems like you, 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 Jesus' second cousin. You know, everything gonna be smooth. But then there are times when you are gonna have to go, not literally, but it's gonna seem like you're in a prison, and you are gonna have to praise your way out. See, a lot of people don't understand. Well, we were just doing that. You know, I don't, I don't look around. I close my eyes, so I don't know what anybody else is doing. But I understand. See, that was some warfare right there. That's what Paul and Silas did when they was in jail. They weren't looking around like, I, why, are we, why are we all in here? Why we got to go through all this? They said, no, brother, let's pray and let's praise. Let's pray and let's pray. That's warfare. Everybody say that's warfare. That's warfare. So part of my fighting, I got to know how to fight. That's part of how to fight. We're not putting on gloves and, and jabbing and hitting the heavy bag. No, our number one instrument in fighting is right here. Yeah. I said the number one instrument is right here. And so that's why the devil plays so hard or works so hard to get a hold of our tongue. Everybody say, let's fight tonight. Let's fight. All right, okay, I got this fighting crowd. I want you to look, at me, look with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus. Now, just because people don't believe that Christianity is a fight. Now, you may be in here. There may be people in here tonight like, well, I don't really believe that. Just because people don't believe that doesn't make the fight go away. It just means you gave the devil all the advantages. <laughs> yeah, just because I don't believe it's a fight don't mean it ain't no fight. You understand? It, look at what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Glory to Jesus. He said, verse 4, for the weapons of our what? Uh-oh. So we're in a what? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down argument in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your disobedience is fulfilled. Now, we're in a warfare. And I said this Sunday, we never outgrow warfare. We got to learn how to fight. As long as we're living, as, as long as we're living, there's going to be warfare. I don't care how old you get in the Lord, there's going to be warfare. And tonight I want to talk about fighting. Because some folks lost their fight. Some folks have conceded too much to the enemy. And they, they, they don't fight. And there's things worth fighting for. One of them is your life. <laughs> One of them is your destiny. One of them is, is what God has for you. One of the things is, you know, I, well, oh man, see, I, I don't want to go there. Don't want to go there. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Let me go here. Let me go here. I told you that um, Sunday I'm rehearsing. I didn't give you these scriptures. I, I, it's really important I give you these scriptures. I said there are two types of kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God, and Jesus said that Satan had a kingdom. And if you put Mark, Matthew 12, 25 on the board, please. Mm. I'm, I'm, I know where I'm going, and I'm trying to hurry up and get there, but I can't get there just yet. Glory to Jesus. Okay, in Mark, Matthew chapter 12, verse 25 and 26, but Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, 
he is divided against himself. How then will his, what? Kingdom. How will his kingdom stand? And I told you there's a kingdom of darkness and there's a kingdom of light. Kingdom of darkness is this, this guy's kingdom here. Kingdom of light, obviously, is Satan. It's whew, Jesus. And the Bible tells us that um, when we come into this kingdom, that renew your mind so you can prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Didn't it say that? Okay. Do you know what the perfect will of God is? It's to keep the devil and his forces under our feet. He said, I give you power over how much? All, All the power of the enemy and nothing, nothing shall by any means hurt us. It is God's will. If we're going to if we're going to not just cling to the promises, but experience them, we got to learn how to stand, yeah, but how to fight in terms of letting the devil know you are already defeated. How many of you know he's already defeated? He's an imposter. And the only people he can take advantage of is those who don't know. That's why I said in Romans, excuse me, uh, Second Peter, uh, First Peter, the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. If he was that bad, he would, he would devour everybody he come across. If he was that bad, he'd kill all the Christians. Right? Now, give me Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Then we're going to go to Ephesians. I'm going to start preaching. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Give that to me in the Amplified, please. Glory be to Jesus. Yeah. Jesus defeated the enemy. I said Jesus defeated him. Look at verse 15. It said God disarmed the principalities and powers. He disarmed them, y'all. He disarmed the principalities and powers that were ranged against us and made a bold display and public example of them in triumphing over them in him and in the cross. Now, so Satan is defeated. Basically, all we're doing is like enforcing this defeat. Now, let's go back to Ephesians 6, where we were yesterday, or Monday, or you know what I'm talking about. Glory to Jesus. <sighs> okay. Now, Ephesians chapter 6. Y'all know about the armor of God, right? Now, this is a very familiar passage of scripture. And sometimes we just kind of gloss right over it. Half the people in here could probably quote it. But a lot of times we don't think about how serious it really is. We're about to read some. This is... Talk about principalities, powers, mights, ruler of darkness. Saints, this is real. This is real, real. This is not a fairy tale. It's real. And I put some emphasis on it the other night. I'm going to put some more on it tonight. That he, you have an enemy that's out to destroy you. You and everybody else around you. He'll take all the collateral damage he can get. He doesn't care. Well, well, they're innocent. He doesn't care about innocent. Well, they're young. He doesn't care about that. He, he is not out to just, just uh, get your attention. He wants to destroy you and everything about you. He wants to take you out, your family out. He wants to take, he wants to destroy, he wants to, he wants to destroy your mind. He wants you to lose your mind. He wants you to think that something's wrong with you. He wants you to think that, that you know what, you have no power in your authority, no say-so in your life. He wants, to, he wants to start the children when they're young, when they're, before they can even talk, he'll attack, he doesn't care. He said, he said, he said these, things, these, these things are real and they're after me. Why? Satan, it's not even about me. He he hates God, but the only way he can get back at God is to get at what God is head over heels in love with. He can't go up there and slap God around, but he can, he can harass us until we lose our mind and, and, and start blaming God for everything that's going on in our lives. 
And so he wants to get back at God and get us to lose confidence in God so, so that we don't have trust in God anymore. And the thing that hurts God or grieves God's heart is when we don't believe him anymore. And we don't want, we don't want a thing to do with him anymore. All because of this, of this stuff, the, the attacks and the harassment and, the, and, the, and especially the mind games of this devil. These are real opposing forces. See, I don't know how to say it. These are real opposing forces that's at work every single day. If I could give you a mic, I would like, give me, hey, uh, what crazy thought did he fire in your head today that you wouldn't want anybody to know about? If we all had them little cartoon captions <laughs> over our head, we're like, oh, no. I wouldn't, I, I, I don't want it. I know it wasn't you. I, would, I know that wasn't you. But see, if we don't deal with that, what it's talking about, casting, if we don't cast them down, those thoughts will sink down on the inside. That's why you can't play with that stuff. And if he was that bad, he would just bogart his way in, put a hog tie on us, but he can't do that. He only works through deception, deceit, deception, and suggestion. Every day. Here it is. This is Christmas time. And this is supposed to be, supposed to be celebration, jingle bells, peace, goodwill toward all men. Right? Do you know this is one of the saddest times in the year? Why? Because he'll get he'll start with something simple. Like, what kind of parent are you? You can't give your you can't give your kids a Christmas. What kind of parent are you? What do you mean you can't give them a Christmas? They, they got a Christmas. But look at you. What kind of parent are you? How, how, that, that's all you give. So almost on them across the street. Do you see you see what they bought that kid? Yeah. And you all, not you, but people get all depressed because, because either they didn't get something they will, they, they didn't get what they wanted, or they couldn't do what they wanted. And it's all because, it's all because, it's all because of where they put that, that holiday. But the devil will use anything. He doesn't care. You can buy a gift anytime you want to. You buy it after 25th, it'd be cheaper. <laughs> That's what my mother used to do. She put that stuff on layaway right after Christmas. Yeah, you say y'all gonna have to, y'all gonna have to, you know, play with the toaster for a couple of days, but <laughs> we get the toys next week. <laughs> yes, she did. Shoot. Opposing forces that want to destroy our lives, and there's people all over the world. There's people. All over this town, there's people in this church, there's people in your family that don't know how to fight, and the devil's taking them out. I'm, I'm not trying to be, but it's, it's, I want it to be so serious. See, when we understand that, we won't have problems setting aside time to do warfare in our prayer. And not just, not just say, uh, play the pro Pray those lay me down to sleep prayers. I'm gonna just say it. <laughs> don't lay me down to sleep. Uh, I don't even know how it go. I never prayed that one. Some prayers you gonna have to fight your tail off. Some situations you gonna have to fight your Rear end off. Um, I didn't. I didn't bring this scripture. Give me Nehemiah chapter four in the New King James, please. Nehemiah chapter four. Let me show you something. <coughs> Hallelujah. And you can hold hold Ephesians six. I don't want to. Um, give me verse thirteen. Give me verse 14. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, look at this. 
And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight. Do what? Fight. Fight for your brethren, for your sons, for your daughters, for your wives, and for your houses. What did he say do? Fight. And see, and this is the message I'm going to bring you tonight. Fight for your house. Amen. Just put up with, what's wrong? Don't worry about what's wrong. Fight for it. I'm screaming. Yes. Yes. Stuff happens. You don't. Stuff happens. You don't just sit back. Listen, you're a child of God. You got the power of God. You fight for your son. Fight for your daughter. Fight for your wife. Fight for your house. Fight for your business. Fight for your job. Fight for your church. You see stuff happening? Fight for it. Fight for your relationship that means something. We, we become too passive and, and, well, let's just go to church. No, man, you better, you better learn how to fight. You've been putting up with this stuff so long. Come on. It's because somebody ain't fighting. You got the upper hand. Quit being a spiritual sissy. Is it okay for me to talk to you like this? This is just the right, just the right crowd tonight? You didn't come out here to hear, hear somebody give you a jingle bell? I'm going I'm to give you a bell. We're going to ring the bell all right. We're going to ring the bell say, come on. Come on with it. It's time. To, we're going to do that tonight. Some of us haven't been fighting. Some of us just be kind of cruising, hoping something goes away. That's sometimes you're going to have to stay up all night and call in, call in well. Say, I ain't coming in today. Why? Because I, I, I ain't coming in. Just give me, I got lead, just mark it down. You don't need to know. I've been up all night. How's that one? Fight. What do you, okay, I'm all off the script now, but what, what have you, what have you been tolerating? Just hoping something gets better. Yo, yo, put that back up there, please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Well, okay, let's put the last part. Fight for your, give me the other part. Your brethren. That can be your, that can be your, 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 your sibling, but for your son and your daughters. <laughs> See, they need an advocate. And if you're the daddy, if you're the mama, that's your job. That's not the youth pastor's job. I don't know how many times we get people, I'm going to bring my kid. Oh, I'm, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. You know, I'm going to bring my, bring my child. I need, they need counsel. No, you need counsel. You need to learn how to fight. Y'all ain't mad at me, are you? Thank you. Yeah, no, you need to learn how to fight. You quit fussing at them and quit. And, and <laughs> you're so busy getting loud with them. Get loud with the devil, the one that's causing this problem. My husband, him, he ain't affectionate no more. Well, you know what? He got an unaffectionate demon on his shoulder. Telling you, you two. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, fight, man. You fight. Fight for your house. He said, fight for your house. All hell can be breaking loose. Somebody, see, it only takes one blood-bought child of God that understands what I'm teaching here tonight. It only takes one in the family to say, all right, all right. Okay, that's it. That's it. Enough already. Enough. Man, I don't know where this came from Wednesday night, but. But yeah, somebody got somebody in there got to say, enough. That's it. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This been going on one month, two months, three years. Listen, this started when you were 17. God dog, and now you're 37. What is up? Somebody ain't been fighting. We got to fight. We got to fight. And we can't watch our, our, our brothers, our sons, our daughters, our wives, and our house go to pots. I can't be all right with that. I'm not all right with that. I can't be all right with that. I'll never be all right with that. That is not the will of God. I don't know about what your name is, what your house is, but for the friendly, that is not the will of God. Somebody fight. 
Somebody fighting. And if you're a member of this church, I'm fighting for you because this is my house. This is my house. <laughs> but no, really, that's part of my job. It's, 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 it's the intercessor. Yeah. Are you fighting? Are you, are you just, you know, reading the Bible? You know why you read the Bible, study the Bible? So you can learn what to do. Fight. You get a bad report, like, oh, heck no. Y'all thought I was going to say hell no, didn't you? <laughs> no. No. Somebody harassing you? No, you got, okay, I didn't even read the beating set. Can we? Y'all want to go there? Fight for your brothers. Fight for your children. You got children that's out in the streets, and you can't just say, "Well, you know what? I guess I guess the Lord will get the Lord will get a hold of it." Not if you don't fight. Come on, God. That don't just happen because he get tired of that. That's some spiritual. There was something spiritual that drove him or her out there. Okay, you know what? Don't give me that yet. Give me um. I, I did bring this one, and this is this is a good place to put it. Give me uh, because we're talking about. Give me Ephesians. No, give me First Timothy. Chapter one. Hallelujah. Man, you don't ever. That's why I say you don't ever outgrow it. You just gotta learn how to fight, and then you become accustomed to fighting. You become accustomed to it. It's not a not a big thing, and then. You know, and then the other thing, once you, once you learn how to fight, find you a partner. Find you somebody to know how to get in there with you. I was looking at some, I, I think I mentioned this Sunday, how we had some, some prayers we, we wrote out and, um, you know, signed them, signed them, signed, sealed, delivered, had the date, time that we signed them. And uh, I was looking at it the other day and, and it, it, it came to pass, it just came to pass, just, I think October. but. You know, we wrote that thing out. We prayed that thing about three or four years ago. And, uh, and me and Deb signed it. I signed at the top. She signed the bottom. Because right above we said, Father, you said if two of us agree on earth, if touching anything they wear, it shall be done for us. us. So we signed and agreed it. We signed an agreement. And we just stood there. We just stood there. Once we prayed, it's working. As long as we don't undo it. And we 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 made some more some adjustments and jacked some other stuff up. And it was huge. It was huge. It was huge. And it it was impossible. So think about it. If I can't do that, I can't do it. Might as well pray. <laughs> I can't do that about it no way. I didn't even take a whole lot of faith. You take more faith to do something, to, to believe God for something you can kind of maneuver, doesn't it? You know, you got your network and you got some contacts and, and you, you know, you play, you play God, Holy Ghost, Angel, you play all of them, all them parts. But when it's impossible, you're like, Father, it is. Yeah. And don't worry about the time, because I'll tell you what, boy, shoot, I, what, I, I think I said it took four years. I think it took longer than that. And I had we had deadlines all along the way. And every time the deadline came, <laughs> I don't know God, I don't know God just covered their eyes or what. But anyway. Everybody say fight. fight. Now, I want to show you this. Actually, I, I, I talked to my wife about this today because I, I wanted to do. I wanted to see something. First uh, Timothy chapter one verse eighteen says this. Remember, Paul taught Timothy about fighting, right? He says, "This I charge. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy. It wasn't his physical son; it was a son in the Lord, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, that by them what? By them what?" Well, by them prophecies. Let's read it again. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, them what? 
prophecies you may wage the good warfare. Wait a minute. What's a prophecy? <laughs> that's, that's a, you know, Timothy probably got it probably during his ordination a time that uh, he, he had hands laid on him because the Bible talks about the gift that was given to you during prophecy. But he said, Timothy, what was spoken over you, you need to use. <laughs> you need to use what was spoken over you to wage good warfare. He said, Bishop, so-and-so spoke a word over you. Now, that's not just for you to fall on the floor and get lint on your hair, in your hair. That's for, you, that's for you to take that word that was spoken by the Spirit of God through, 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 uh, through Pastor Friendly, and you wage warfare with that. Well, I thought I'm supposed to use the Bible. Well, you use the Bible too. But God can give you a word uh, uh, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, and he says, See, and, and typically that word, that word, the word of prophecy is always edifying and it, and it speaks of the, of the, of the end, the end. And so, so he said, you can take that word and even when you get discouraged, because the devil's going to hit you with discouragement, doubt, and disappointment. But in the midst of standing, you take that word that was spoken and spoken about your life, spoken about your business, spoken about your family, spoken about your health, and you take that word and you say, devil, yeah, say that, yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but God already spoke to me, and he said, I shall be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. God already told me it's going to be all right after a while. And he said, you take that word. I mean, now, now, I asked Deb about this because I asked her to send it to me. She, she had a word in uh, October 1983. October 1983. And she, she kept that word. She still got it. She, said, she gave me a copy of it today. Still got it. And it's all come to pass. But she, she held on to it. And it was, it was regarding our child. Because they were telling her she can't have no baby, you can't have no child, and, and, and all of this is wrong with you, and all that. And, and they said, well, you need to go to a specialist. She said, I, I, ain't, got no, I ain't going to no specialist. She just pulled out her word. And she waged warfare yeah. until her body got in line, until everything it took 10 years. But nonetheless, it's okay. Yeah. And, then, and then it went on saying stuff. I wasn't going to read it to you, but I was like, no, nah, I ain't going to put him on the spot. because here. But, but it, it went on saying stuff that was going to happen. Now, here's my point, because she, I can't say I held, I didn't hold on to it. She held on to it. She held on to it. And she said, God, see, that is just as good as scripture. It's just as good because God spoke it and he spoke it. So, so, so what was said about you? Now, Misha, I just told you, remember I told you, I asked you, where's your husband? And your husband walked in, he's back there. But when I was, I was looking at this, God spoke to me about y'all today. And he said, don't you be discouraged. Because I, I don't know what I said to y'all. I spoke some words to y'all sometimes. I don't even remember what I said. But he said, tell them, don't let that go. Tell them to hold on to it and ride it like a bucking bronco. And don't you let go. It doesn't matter what it looked like. You're not a failure. You got the good. And God said, I'm just seasoning you till you get to that point. Just don't give up. Don't, you, don't, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. Don't let anybody tell you why you're trying again. You just stay, and stay with what God told you. I don't even remember what he said, but you know. Now, God talked to, talk to, talk to me about them today, but whatever, whatever God spoke to you, whatever he spoke to you, you wage warfare with it because the time going to come for disappointment. You're going to be discouraged, and the devil going to see to it that every mistake you make, he amplifies it. Why are you even trying? And, but you stay with what the word of God said. You stay with what, what somebody spoke over you and you wage warfare in it. You are not a loser. You are not a fool. You are not a failure. You are somebody that God is ready to show out in and bring something to pass that they said couldn't happen. Whoa. My God. My God. I mean, we live in the, we live in stuff now. I mean, God, God spoke because I went back and like, oh yeah, you said this, you said that, and there was one, there was one, there was one, man, 
my armor came out my skin. That one you sent me today, I forgot all about that one. I don't even know that. I didn't know the people from Adam. This lady got the prophecy. I read it today. I'm like, good God Almighty. I said, all that God has told me. All that God has showed. There's so much in here that ain't funny. And I know you got some stuff in you too. Don't, don't give up on it. Wage warfare over it. Man, I'm halfway. You got to protect your dream. You let nobody steal that thing from you. If he can steal your dream, he'll make you mediocre. Yeah. You, yeah. I'm tired of mediocre. Yeah. I'm born for something great. Yeah. Now, whatever great is for me, it may not be the same for you, but I ain't mediocre. I don't like average. I never did like average. Either be good or be sorry, but don't be average. Mm. So he said, wage, wage warfare. Wage warfare. So a, according to what, what, what he told him, he said, this is an instrument. This is an instrument to use when fighting the devil. God already said some stuff about you. You dream some stuff and have a setback after setback. Don't, don't, don't let that, 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 that does not define you. Amen. Now see, the warfare part is standing against the lies of the enemy because he never going to encourage you. He going to make, he going to, he going to pull up all of your faults, all, all your deficits and act like the one, the one you're looking at doesn't have any. The one you compare yourself doesn't have any. They got them. We all got them. So we got to fight. Fight for your family. Fight for your son. Fight for your daughter. Fight for your house. Fight for your house. It don't take one to fight, to fight for the house. God, dog it. You know, we sang that song a minute ago. Uh, he good from, from generation to generation. And see, you get to the point where you start believing it, when you start walking it, you're like, uh-uh, uh-uh, in the name of Jesus. And uh-uh, not just me, not just me, but all the generations, however many generations I got, in the name of Jesus, this is what's happening. Woo! Friendly, you preaching pretty good tonight. <laughs> Y'all see why I couldn't hardly wait to get here? Now, let's go back to Ephesians 6 and let's wrap it up. I think we'll wrap it up. I didn't even get to the shouting part. So it's not a fairy tale, saints. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't happen by default. We have to, see, that's why I want to encourage you. You, you, gotta, you gotta be a prayer. This doesn't happen by reading it. Real opposing forces out to destroy your life. And they really don't, you know, you don't really see the giant that you talk to until you start moving toward the grapes. And what I mean by that is, you know, you say, well, I'm good. I ain't. Well, it's because you're not, you know, not a threat. Okay, Ephesians 6. Whew. And um, I read out the Amplified again. I wrote this down. It only takes one family member with the power of God who knows what he's doing to tear all that stuff down that's coming on the house. Mm, mm, mm. In conclusion, verse 10, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with him. We talked about that. Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Put on the whole armor of God, the armor of a heavy armed soldier which God supplies, and here it is, I put emphasis on the Sunday, that you may be able to su successfully to stand up against some, all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. So, if I have the armor on, I can stand successfully. If I don't have it on, I can't stand successfully. And the strategies 
and the deceit of the devil will, will take me out. But I want to rehearse this again. Strategies. So I said that the devil has a master plan, a grand design, a game plan, an action plan, tactic, tricks, and schemes to come after me. <laughs> he has these strategies, and he's, he's approaching me. Again, not to just scare me. He wants to destroy my life. Yeah. He wants to disrupt my life. He wants to inflict emotional pain. He wants to put so much pressure on me, I'll do something crazy. I got a friend who killed himself about a year ago. I just took his voice mail off my phone, not too recently. Love God. He loved God. He, you know, he, he, but the, he has so much pressure on him. Now, I know those we're sitting here, we've been like, oh, sure, I will never have that much pressure. Ain't, ain't that much pressure in the world. I see them captions over your head. <laughs> no. It's probably not. But you never, I, I learned, one thing I learned, I never say, I le I've learned to say, if that was me, I wouldn't, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know what you would do in a given situation. But what we're talking about here, and that's how that's his that's his that's his aim. If he can if he can just rent space in your head and go un undetected, it'll start with something simple, something innocent. And, and, you know, then it, it, it can become a stronghold. That's part of his deceit and strategy. He won't just come in, wham! He'll just come in and say, hey. <laughs> he'll just, he'll say, hey. You know, kind of like a dude trying to talk to somebody. He don't show all his cars when he first come in. He just wants, hey, get that toe in there. <laughs> I like him. He's got a good spirit on him. Now you just saw a toe. You just saw a toe. Wait till you see the torso. Ah, anyway, if you want to find out about dating, go to www.friendlydate.com. Okay. That's not true. Those of you listening on video or tape, they're like, well, let me write that down. <laughs> okay. Um, Oh, let me give you these. Man, I'm a, I, I didn't know. I didn't think like I talked that long. Did I? Okay. Strategies. Let me give you some strategies. You might want to get the, the video or the, or the CD. What's some of his strategies? I told you he wants to inflict emotional pain, turn you away from trusting God. He wants to paralyze your life. He wants to paralyze your dreams and and stop you from planning beyond this next 30 days. He wants to, you don't even plan anymore. You don't even plan big. He wants to paralyze you. He wants you to think that it's always going to be like this. It's always, you're not, you're not going, you can't, you can't get out of this. You, you're stuck. It's this, this is your lot in life. You shouldn't have done that. If you hadn't have done that, you wouldn't have been stuck. But you did that, and now it's over. You will never get out of that. Paralyze you. Anybody feel like that tonight? Okay, got somebody right here. Yeah, thank you. It's going to be okay. We're going to take care of that tonight. And there's others. I know you. That, see, <laughs> how do you think I know about that? The reverend, because see, some people know how don't know how to come out of the cave. They go into the cave for peace, but they don't know how to come out. And that's where, and that's where that's where he'll 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 get you there all by yourself. Oh, okay, so, so we got some folks to bend now. Yeah, 
And you don't want, I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to see nobody. I don't want to see the Bible. I don't even want to see Jesus right now. And he'll paralyze you. And then, the, well, I thought you was a good Christian. You know God ain't going to ask you prayer now because you ain't read the Bible in four days. You ain't been to church in three Sundays in a row. Isn't that how you do? And that's all, that's all the strategies and deceits right there. Yeah. That's all, that's all the strategy. And see, and he can, and the strategy is so, so, so potent because, see, they can just stay with us. No matter where I go, that thing can be right there. I can be on a roller coaster. And I may think, oh, Lord, I'm going to fall out because I didn't do right last week. You ever been on, <laughs> you ever been on a plane with some serious turbulence? You think about, Lord, did I pray this morning? Did, huh? I was on a plane the other day, it's, I, I swore, I didn't swear, but I thought the wind came off that joker. I heard a pop, I, oh, what the? I literally got up, and the pilot said, I'm finished. And the pilot said, oh, uh, well, this is, I don't know, this is, this is, just, this is just crazy. Uh, oh, we're getting ready to experience, oh, for the next 10, 5 to 10 minutes, uh, it, please sit down. I'm like, no. I, I unfastened my belt and I got it walked in the bathroom. I got pee, man. I got it. And so, I know. We family, right? See, I just get too comfortable with y'all sometimes. Man. Okay. My wife's going to treat me out when I get home. Uh, uh, what did I get ready to tell you? Bathroom, bathroom. Yeah, I went to the bathroom. I locked that door. Because, I mean, that thing was just... Please, please, everybody, please, please, everybody be seated. I'm like, I uh, I went to that bathroom. Shana, mama, ho, shatala, la, ba, kaya. I'm serious. I got busy up in there, man. I got busy. And I said, uh -oh. I said, when in the name of Jesus, peace. I went to work. And I tell you what, we smooth all the way today. I went to work, man. Yeah, I was like, oh, I ain't putting no. I had enough of that. I had enough. It was, I mean, it was, she's over there sleeping. I don't sleep with bumps. Okay, I don't even know why I told y'all that. Fight, fight, fight. <laughs> you gotta fight. If God gave you a word, you fight for it. And and not so much if you get a prophecy too. But sometimes just that's why they gotta be in that word. God will speak to you. From that word, like this is your, I'm, I'm, he's like this. This he's, he said, take that. He'll say, take that scripture. That, take, this is the one right here you use on, on 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 this occasion for this battle. Here's the scripture right here. He, he won't give you the whole Bible. He'll give you he'll give you one, maybe two or three. But y'all know what I'm talking about over here. Huh? Yeah, he'll give you one scripture, and he said that that's yours. Just just write it. And you know, if you got a smartphone or a dumb phone, whatever kind of phone you got. <laughs> <laughs> Put that joke on your phone. <laughs> I made a, I made a, I made a ringtone. Not a ringtone. The other night, I didn't, you know, it's kind of smart. I made a, uh, I made a, um, not a ring, alarm, an alarm, and it comes on with the, uh, with the, uh, 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 E. W. Kenyon, uh, the prayer habit. That's my alarm. Talking about the power of prayer. So when I hear it, guess what I want to do when I get up? I want to go and pray. Yeah. Yeah, that's my alarm. I ain't having no ding dong. I, <laughs> I got somebody telling me the power of prayer. You can, see, we got authority to change stuff. A lot of people don't believe it. I'm, listen, it, 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 
do y'all mind if I get, get back to some radical stuff I used to preach back in the, back in the D day? <laughs> no, no, we got power to change stuff. We just gotta believe it and do it. Here's what he wants to do: strategies. He wants to paralyze your life. He wants to paralyze your dreams. He wants to dilute your hopes. He doesn't want you expecting nothing. He wants to steal your confidence. He wants to rob you of your intensity. You started out strong, but now you just have doing stuff. He wants to rob you of your intensity. When you have intensity, it creates something in you that pushes you even further. But he wants to rob that. He wants you to get casual about your life, casual about your family, casual about your finances, casual about your, your dream, casual. He wants to bring bad reports to sap your energy and to cause you to don't even not even dream anymore just start settling for a sitting back and by default you don't even fight he wants to kill your desires to make a difference in somebody's life he wants to kill your desires that, like you don't have anything to give who do you think you are who wants to listen to you everybody in here has something that God wants you to make a difference in somebody's life. And the enemy would love for you to think that you don't have it. Don't nobody care about you. You don't have nothing. You need to just sit down somewhere. Everybody in here has something to give. Everybody. All right, I thought I might get an amen on that one, but. <laughs> he wants to steal and kill and destroy your desires to do something special. He wants to kill that desire. You know, you, I mean, I, I mean, I'm telling my son since he was knee high to a grasshopper, man. Look, God got some great stuff in you. There's greatness in you. He, you know, I, you know, now don't, I, don't get me. I don't care what you think about this, but I used to, you know, the friendly is gonna leave a mark. Yes, sir. I ain't, uh, uh when I leave, I'm gonna leave a hole. When I leave, the third folk gonna know. Oh Lord, they died. He, he died. You know what I mean? So what I'm talking about, I plan on intentionally making a difference in somebody's life. I don't even want to go to sleep at night. I got a thing on my phone that just encourages me to, to go encourage somebody. I'm going to make a difference. See, he'll tell you, well, you messed up. Don't you know what you did? Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I don't even give him a chance. Glory to God. Whew. <sighs> He wants us to settle for a mediocre life. He wants us to, he wants to steal your fight so you won't even get up and try anymore. He wants you to throw your hands up and do what other quitters do. Quit and make excuses. <laughs> Woo! Here's another one of his strategies. I'm going to take just about two minutes on this one. Another effective strategy of the enemy is delays. When he wants to derail the arrival of your manifestation, derail your manifestation, derail your breakthrough. Because <laughs> he, he understands anything that breaks through Bring glory to God, and, and you got a big mouth. So he wants to, he wants to derail manifestation. And how does he do that? Most of the time, because God uses people. God uses people. Most of what God does in your life is gonna come through some people. But the enemy, especially once you once you declare it, <laughs> he he will go to work to 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 derail that and and cause delays. Why, Pastor? I'm glad you asked that question. Because delays, delays will weaken your resolve. A delay will weaken your, your, your ability to stand. If, if, you, if, 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 if you let it. Delays will weaken your desire to reach and keep moving forward, and keep believing, and keep pressing. Delay was like, uh, shoot, how about, oh, man, it's been two weeks. It will weaken your desire to, to move forward, and eventually it, 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 will shut, it will shut your desire off. You won't even go, delays. 
you won't keep standing. I think the Bible, the scripture in Proverbs says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. You stuff keep getting put off and put off. If you don't know how to, if you don't know how to, I, I, I know, I got some delay, and, and uh, I, I say all the time, every delay is working in my favor. Every delay is working in my favor. Why? How, how can you say that? Because I say, oh, everything is working together. Everything is working together for my good. I love God. I'm called. I love God. I ain't trying to hurt nobody. I'm just trying to advance the kingdom. Everything is working together for my good. Every delay is working in my favor. Yes. Delay is not denial. God is just, it's just taking God a little longer to make a bigger one. A better one. No stress, strain, no stress. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Woo. Praise God. Y'all good? Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Let me see here. <laughs> we get ready to take care of some business here in just a minute. So, so keep your keep your wig on tight. Um, let me see. Maybe I'll maybe I don't need to. Um what's the last scripture I read? Thirteen? Did I get did I get through twelve? I got through twelve, right? Huh? Are you paying attention? Okay, let's go to 13. 13. Therefore, put on the whole complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place, the purpose of the armor is so you can stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, hold your ground, being tightened, we read this Sunday, with the belt of truth around your loins, and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. And I told you, God's word has to be final authority if I want to stand. Verse 15, and having uh, charged your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness, and the readiness by the good news of the gospel of peace. Now lift up over all, all that other stuff, all this covering. Now he's saying, okay, this must really be important. Lift up over all this stuff I told you, the shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. Holding on to the promises, saint. Pray at all times. Now see, all of that, I'm dressed now now I can pray. Now I can pray. Pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season. When it's going good, pray. When it's not so good, pray. When you don't know what's happening, pray. Just don't pray when you got a crisis. Just don't pray when you're going through. No, we all go through. He said pray in every season in the spirit with all manner of prayer and entreating. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose. And persevering, interceding in, on behalf of all the saints, God consecrated people. And pray also for me, y'all. Pray for me that the freedom of utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth to proclaim boldly the mystery of the good news of Jesus. Thanks of God. And let's understand it, that we have to stand. And we're not just standing. We're standing to fight. And... The reason we can stand is because now we're empowered with the power that comes through our union with God. Boy, this is more than Sunday go to meet in church, man. This is more than, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm talking about, see, if we're going to have some unexplainable things occur in our lives, impossible things happen, we've got to be able to stand and doggone it. How did I say that? Fight. Fight, doggone it. I want you to stand with me, please. We got a fight in church. And I am convinced. I am convinced. Now, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm cranking up my, I think I let y'all in on my study tonight. Praise God. How many of you? How many of you? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 
how many of you need to get back in the game? I mean, you know, and I, this, is not a, this is not a condemnation thing. It's where you're like, wow, Pastor, I, 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 I kind of I slacked off with the fight. The fight wasn't quite there. I'm not condemning anybody because we all need to be reminded. I mean, we had to be, I told you Sunday, you know, we had to start coasting in some areas. And some, that's one of, one of the, you're always susceptible to the enemy, most of all, when things are going good in a particular area. You're like, oh, got that. Oh, I can't put it on autopilot. I want us to pray now. We're going to pray. And there are some people in here tonight, like my brother said, I said, how many of you, you just feel like you're paralyzed? You can't move forward. I want us, I want everybody in here to be absolutely free. We're going to leave here tonight totally free, totally, totally free. And I don't know if, you, if, you, well, if you've been here on Saturday mornings, you know what we're about to do. You know how to do it. If you haven't come out here on Saturday mornings, this is what we do on Saturday. Now, I want all my Saturday people to join in with me. Because there's some people here that don't know how to do what we're talking about. There's some people that don't know how to fight. And see, we got enough fight in us to take care of everybody in the room tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible, that's why it said praying, praying with all prayer for all the saints. That's why it's so powerful to come to church. We, that's why we need to get together with some people that know how to pray. Now, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know this. When the saints get together to pray, something takes place. That the devil has no answer for. I said the devil has no answer for. So as we begin now, I want you to know Jesus already defeated him. Listen, you are raised up together with him in heavenly places. That's where you are right now. Every day, there's not a devil in hell that can stop what we're about to do because we believe God. Come on now, I want you to just, let's begin to thank God for who he is and what he's done for us. Yeah, let's thank him. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you right now. Come on, this is part of the warfare right here. It may not be going well for you, but I'm thanking him like it's already done. I thank you, Lord God. It's already done. I give you praise, Lord. Come on, we're going to fight for our house right now. Come on, let's fight for our house in Jesus' name. We stand, Lord. We thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. Take my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We bind every devil in hell. We cannot be stopped because of your goodness. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, uh, come on, thank you. Come on, yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Devil, take your hands off my sister. Take your hands off of my brother. Take your hands off of my children. In the name of Jesus. We fight for our children. We fight for our health. We're strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. We cannot be defeated. Your dream shall come to pass for my life. Thank you for it, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, most high God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. You always called me to triumph. I bless your name. I bless your name. I bless your name. I cannot be defeated. Oh! Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Take your hands off of every man in this room. Every man in this room. Every household in this place. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Every man. Every man. Come on, wife. Fight for your husband right now. Fight for your husband right now. You can't take him out. You can't take him out. In the name of Jesus. You can't take my children out. You can't have my daughter. You can't have my son. You can't take him out. In the name of Jesus. Yes. I forbid it. I forbid it. I forbid it. God. Shake it. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
The devil is defeated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We dreaming again. Come on, thanks. Let's dream again. Let's believe again again. Let's move forward again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come here, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.